Debate over mail-in voting ramping up amid the coronavirus pandemic. And now, a new Washington Post-ABC poll finds a plurality of Americans, 49%, say voting by mail is, quote, vulnerable to significant levels of fraud. 43% say there are adequate protections against that. Meantime, more than 30 former national security leaders, including Madeleine Albright, Susan Rice, John Kerry, Leon Panetta, and James Clapper, what a bunch, are warning that foreign interference remains a threat. And they are urging Congress in a letter to secure funding to keep elections safe. So, Juan, how do you do that? How do you keep elections safe, but also uh, give people peace of mind that if there is a mail-in system, it is not going to be compromised? Uh, well, I guess you put in protections. What, what, what does that fraud, mean? What does I that mean, put in protections? What are those protections? Well, so, so I think that what you'd have to do is to... In California, as long as the ballot gets to uh, the registrar, by election day, or no, not by election, as long as it's, it's postmarked by election day, it will be counted. That means that if a lot of states have this, we're not going to see a winner on election night. It could take up to three weeks. No. And that is very no. unsatisfying. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it right now. We can't have that in this country. Uh, my opinion on this is uh, uh, mail-in ballots don't need to happen. Uh, yesterday, I was walking down the street, and, and I saw about 100 people standing in line for Shake Shack. And I respected the heck out of the back half of that line for their dedication to fast food. We have been able to stand in line for things that are much less important than voting. So uh, we've worked at the kinks. You stand six feet apart, you wear a mask, you vote, and then you sanitize your hands afterwards. So I see this as such a non-issue. In Seattle yesterday, a protest downtown turned violent when police say a separate group of rioters came in and began smashing windows and injuring police officers and then tried to light the East Police Precinct on fire. The same precinct abandoned by officers during the protest autonomous zone occupation that was set up a while ago. At least two people were arrested yesterday. A dozen police officers were hurt. Joining me now, White House Press Secretary Kaylee McEnany. Kaylee, great to have you on the program this morning. Good to join um, you, I, I wish that this news were taking a different, you know, tone and texture, but it is now butting up against what the president wants to do later today. Tell me about what he, what he's planning. Yeah, so the president's been unmistakably clear that there is no place for violence in our streets that we're seeing in Democrat cities. Uh, I'll leave it to DOJ and DHS to announce what those details will look like. But the president has been clear. He wrote a letter uh, to the mayor of Chicago saying it's time for you to fix the problems in your city. And he's been clear that if they don't step up and get to work, uh, he will be there to protect the American people. Uh, it's the job of Democrat governors and mayors to protect their cities. Uh, they have the police power. but. This this president wants to stand up to the violence we've seen, multiple children who have lost their lives and tragic, tragic episodes in these cities. So today at 5 p.m. Eastern, when we see this rolled out, will the president take questions? Yeah, so I'll leave it to the president to make that decision as to when he'll take questions. But he did announce today that going forward, he'll be doing 5 p.m. briefings. So you'll hear from him tomorrow at 5 p.m., but I'll leave it to the president to decide uh, as to what today okay. looks like. Uh, okay, and and one of my one of my top questions would be just to speak to the federal agents who are on the ground in Portland, Oregon, where you know the the leadership there, Democrat leadership, as the president has pointed out, um, is is calling for some pullback from those federal agents. What can you tell me about who is on the ground um, with regard to what the White House is hoping to achieve? Yeah, so it's a great question. Let me um, point out that there are two models here, Harris. First, you have the okay. uh, cooperative model, which is what we're seeing in Kansas City, where the DOJ announced Operation Legend. That was named after Legend Talaferro, a four-year-old uh, boy who lost his life. He was shot while sleeping in, in his sleep. And the governor there was cooperative and said, I need the help of 
federal authorities, and, and we've been there. The DOJ has been there to help and assist ATF and the FBI and other entities. That's the cooperative model. What mm -hmm. we've seen in Portland, however, is a governor who's unwilling to admit that he's lost control of his city, a mayor uh, who's saying, I don't need the help of federal law enforcement, while you have these rioters trying to burn down a courthouse, uh, set a police building on fire, hurl pig's feet, uh, attack officers, and threaten police officers and citizens alike. Uh, and in this case, you've had DHS go in to protect federal property. It's a different model, but the cooperative one is the preferable one because it's about truly putting politics aside and helping the residents, which is what this is about.